Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming in. I'm going to talk about some of my experiences, my own thought process. So, few things that I'm going to talk here, maybe you will not find in some of the books. It's purely based on my experiences dealing with projects and developing the products. So, if you find some similarities, good. I am not here to force you to apply whatever I say in your work. I'm here to just trigger your thought process. So let's see if you can do that. Oh, you all know the topic is going to be like, why is Agile failing for you and how do you get it right? So I have, I have made this session into two areas of thought process. First, I'm going to talk about few topics which you need to understand with clarity. And then the second part as to where we are heading Can you hear me? Okay. So where are we heading towards the wrong thinking? So let's let's try to do that. I want to ask you a question. If I take a car key and give it to a person, start the vehicle and give this vehicle to a person who does not know how to drive it, what are the chances that they're going to meet with an accident? Very high percentage. Now, I see a yes provided they drive. They attempt to drive. Now, I see an advertisement from a Benz car. They say, we have eight airbags, safety features, all the doors have the airbags. I take this sophisticated car, give it to a person who does not know how to drive a car. What are the chances they're going to meet with an accident? Still high? No, this, yeah, will they meet with an accident? What are the chances? Still high? Did the sophisticated car make any difference? <coughs> Did it make any difference? Yeah, the person sitting in the car may be avoiding an accident, but then people outside is certainly going to get the hit, right? Now, I want to start the session with a very, very interesting thought process that I've observed. Approximately 75% of the teams and the organizations that were struggling, that were failing while they were delivering the projects, continued to fail when they adapted any of the Agile frameworks. Wow, a big lesson. If you don't know how to drive a car, giving you a sophisticated car does not make you a driver. Now, if you are struggling now, Changing from waterfall to scrum, scrum to Kanban, Kanban to something else, scrum to something else. Don't expect that you're going to be successful. It's not going to make you a driver. It's not going to make you a software engineer. Very simple. But then, if you know how to drive a car and we give you a tempo traveler, a bigger vehicle, what are the chances that you're going to meet with an accident? Lesser chances? I don't say no, but lesser chances, at least you will avoid the accidents. That's exactly what has been seen, approximately 75%. These numbers could be different, but I've, I'm rounding it up to 75%. People who were winning in their traditional ways of working continued to win when they used any of the Agile frameworks. Hmm. If the so-called Agile is not working for you today, if you claim the statement, Agile does not work for me today, probably the previous framework or a process did not work for you either. I'm not here to say, start using Agile, you'll be successful. I'm here to question you. Are you successful today? If yes, you're going to be successful when you change your frameworks and then the thought process around it. Think about it. Now. Don't get into this buzzword so much. Yeah. Let's assume there are two people who are lost in the forest. Person A and person B. They are lost in the forest. If they don't have any luck parameter, who among A and B do you think has a better chances of reaching a goal? Who has a better chances? Two people, A and B, lost in the forest. There is no luck parameter. You can't say anything. Let me help you out. If A inspects and adapts, 
B does not. Now who's got a better chances? A. A. Oh, it became so easy for you now. Which means among the people, the one who inspects and adapts has a better chances of reaching a goal. You all agree? I'm not saying 100% they're going to reach a goal. They have better chances. Let's look at this. If person A inspects and adapts, person B also inspects and adapts, but person B does it more frequently. Person B does it more frequently. Who's got a better chances now? Wow. You're now saying B? Initially you said A, now it is B. A few seconds before you said inspect and adapt is important, takes us to the goal. But now it is the frequency of inspect and adapt. I'm not saying you that too frequent is good, but then frequency does matter. It's very, very appropriate, required. Okay, so let's put a situation on them. Person A inspects and adapts, person B inspects and adapts. They both do it at the same frequency, F. But person A takes effective and efficient decision. Now who's got a better chances? A. Why are you changing your answers so quickly? <laughs> because I'm changing certain situations. Which means, now, if I have to tell you something, you are lost in a forest, and if you have to get to the destination or get to a goal, remember you don't know the route, you don't know where the goal is. You're discovering, you're identifying the goal, safe land, as well as you're identifying the route. Both are unknowns. And now, you're constantly inspecting and adapting. And that's what I call key to success. Key to success is inspecting and adapting, doing that inspection and adaption frequently, and making sure that you take effective and efficient decisions. Now remember, a lot of people talk about inspection and adaption alone doesn't give you a better chances of winning. Even if you do it frequently, you don't have a better chances of winning. Where are we going wrong? We don't take effective and efficient decisions. Now I want you to replace person A with yourself, person B with your competitor in the market. If your competitor has a better frequency than you have, they have a better chances of winning. If the competitors have better effective decision making capabilities, they have a better chances of winning. Now it is about your objectives in terms of, are you good at inspect and adapting? Are you good at the frequency of inspect and adapt? And are you taking effective decisions? Think over. Irrespective of which framework you use, if you don't get these three thought process into your thoughts at work, it's not gonna work. Now apply this to any framework. In fact, if you apply this to Scrum, Scrum, in just one line is inspection adaption. Gets to that level. Now, let's look at this. If I have to teach you chess game, I'll come back to this key to success. If I have to teach you chess game, how much time would it take? 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour? In that 30 minutes to one hour, what are you gonna learn? You're gonna learn the rules of the game, yes? the pawns, the, pa the powers, how do we move exactly that way. In software engineering, we have what is called as framework. Talk about any framework. Framework gives you the rules and the guidelines. How big is a framework rule book? Chess rule book, how big is it? A few pages. Exactly that way. An example of Scrum. Scrum rule book is about 18 pages. Remove the first page, photograph, last page, thank you, note, and then the index. You know the book is hardly 16 pages, that's it. Rules of the game. Now, with just the rules, can we win the match? No. What do we need? We need strategy, and that's exactly where we head to. Strategy makes you win. So just by knowing the rules, you will not win. Strategy makes you win. And can you tell me, how many strategies can I have? I have infinite strategy and that's why people say learning chess is very easy. Mastering chess takes a lifetime. Now if I have to talk about Scrum, I'm taking Scrum as just an example. You can apply that to any other frameworks as well. Learning Scrum, very easy. Mastering Scrum, extremely difficult. Why? Because of 
un unlimited infinite strategies that you can build on them. Now, every time you talk to somebody, they are not talking about the rules of the game, they are talking about the strategies that they use. So, you need to be very clear, are these strategies applicable for me? Let me give you an example. Your name sir? Santosh. Santosh. Okay, Santosh is here, let us assume Santosh is playing a game, chess game. He moves his minister three steps in a specific direction. Okay. Now, I ask him, hey Santosh, why did you move your minister three steps? Should he have a reason for it? Because it is his strategy? Now, he is going to tell me, oh, I am trying to enter the opposition, I am being aggressive, I am trying to avoid a pawn kill. That reason makes sense to me. I will say, awesome, good. Now, I come over here. I ask you, your name? Anjana. So, I ask her, she moves her minister three steps in a specific direction. Is this a strategy? If I ask her, why did you move your minister three steps? Should she have a reason for it? Yes? And that reason should be meaningful? What if she responds, hey, I looked at Santosh, he is moving his minister three steps, so I moved my minister three steps. Is she ever going to win the match? No? No. no? Let us come to the office. I want to tell you. Others are doing something called as agile. We have to do it as well. Okay, what are they doing? They have one person called a scrum master. Find out a scrum master, put a label. Everybody, come in the morning, stand in the circle, answer three questions. From today, we are agile. <laughs> yeah. We are just copying. I mean, somebody's strategy without understanding a reason. Now, this is where I would like you to think about. From now onwards, every time you hear the word strategy, I write it with S with a circle, strategy. You need to always follow up your strategy statement with a very important question, why? Ask the person, why? If the answer that comes up for that question, strategy, makes sense to you, common sense to you, to your team, then that strategy is probably in the right direction to go ahead, at least now. And if that strategy does not work for you, go back to the key to success, inspect and adapt on your strategy. Do it frequently. Take effective actions on your strategy. Change the strategy. There are infinite strategies. You don't have to look at what are others doing. And this is where the first point. We fail because we just blindly copy. And what do we copy? We copy the practices. We copy the naming conventions. Others are doing it. We have to do it because we have a peer pressure. We have to be agile. Otherwise, the industry will not look at us. Think over. Are you in the symptoms? Wow. Then you are going to struggle. The so-called agility is not going to work for you. The next one is the tools and techniques. Yeah. The tools and techniques makes your job effective and efficient. What do you mean by effective and efficient? Easier, faster, better and simpler. A simple example. If you ask me, Naveen, break this table. How can I break the table? My physics teacher said, go bang it, it is going to break. Okay, I'm going to hit it and then break it. Does it break? What did my physics teacher say? If it doesn't break, apply more force, more pressure. My goal, break the table. I'm going to break the table, apply more force, more pressure. Hit it hard. Does it break? No. What did my physics teacher say? Again, okay. But you know, at some point, I will start realizing my hands are paining, but the table does not break. This is the point I start thinking, inspecting, adapting. Oh, hold on. This is not working. Let me go to the market, get a big hammer, and then I hit the thud. The table breaks. Hammer is a tool. How I'm using the hammer is a technique. The tool and the technique made my job, the work, effective and efficient, easier, faster, better and simpler. Now, if the hammer does not make my job easier, faster, better and simpler, either I am using a wrong tool or a wrong way. Change the tool. There are infinite tools. Now, look at this beauty. Scrum, the rule book is very simple, gives you a guidelines, 15 page, 16 page. But there are infinite rules, uh, infinite strategies, depending on your constraints, depending on your situations, 
there are infinite tools that you can come up with, techniques you can come up with. That is where you have framework, different tools, different strategy. In fact, this is how I say, this is the symbol that I have come up with. Framework, tools and techniques, strategy. How many rules, how many guidelines do we have? Hardly any, few 15 to 16 pages, big book, that's it, scrum guide. Tools and techniques, there are infinite. Strategies, infinite. Now, you have fixed rules, infinite strategies, infinite tools and techniques. Now you know you can apply these things to a lot of places. Let's assume you're working in a mobile application development company. You're using the same scrum, same framework, different tools, different strategies. You're using in a healthcare related segment, same scrum, different tools, different strategy. You're working in say banking sector, same scrum, different tools, different strategy. You're working in say embedded system, same scrum, different tools, different strategies. In fact, many people say agile does not work for us. This particular framework or process does not work for us. If you think deeper, to me, it's not the framework that is not working. It is the tool that you're using does not make you go faster, that is not working for you. It is the strategy that is not making you win. Change the strategy, change the tool, you're gonna win. And if you stop inspecting and adapting frequently, you're gonna fail. That was not my statement, you made it say. Two people lost in the forest, how do they get out? Yep. So now think about it. In fact, I got married in 2016 using Scrum. <laughs> My wedding was planned using Scrum. Yeah, same Scrum, different tools, different strategies. So you, you need to know what is the rule, what is the framework saying, and what tools, what techniques, what strategies can I use on that? So think over, are you thinking in these directions in your office work? Many people fail here in understanding the difference between tools and techniques, strategy, and what is the rule. Let's come to this. The next biggest confusions or problems that I have seen is in understanding Agile Manifesto itself. Is this Agile Manifesto? How many of you have seen Agile Manifesto? Is this Agile Manifesto? It's? Or it's values. Is this Agile Manifesto? Oh yeah? Hmm. Is this Agile Manifesto? Hmm. In fact, don't get me wrong. I have seen coaches, trainers, scrum masters who use only those four bullet points and then say, let's talk about Agile. Nonsense. Only four lines, let's talk about Agile, nonsense. And in fact, even this slide, yes, a lot of people use this, we talk about it, but my question is, how do we you interpret this? That's a very important aspect. Even when you show this full, and if your interpretation is wrong, you're gonna fail. Because the very aspect of what it means, you're misunderstood. Let me just help you understand this in my own way. You may interpret it in different ways. I look at this as, Agile Manifesto, the winning team secrets. In fact, all those frameworks that we are talking about today, they existed before 2001. And in 2001, February, these experts, they got together to do a reverse engineering to find out, hey, why are we winning? How are we winning? Let's do that reverse engineering and find out. And they came up with a result of the four values and 12 principles. And that's exactly what is the secrets of their winning. It was the secrets of their winning. Now, if you look at Agile Manifesto as the secrets of winning, you can read this Agile Manifesto in a completely different way without changing the meaning. It's the winning teams always valued. Winning teams always valued individual interactions more than process and tools. Wow. It is a winning team that valued people more. I am not here to say you also do the same thing. I am here to ask you, question you, are you part of a winning team? If yes, what are your valuing? Where do you see value? Next, 
Winning teams always valued working software more than comprehensive documentation. Why are they winning? Because they valued working software more. Winning teams always valued, not one or twice, always valued customer collaboration more than contract negotiation. Winning teams always valued responding to change more than following a plan. Now my question to you, are you thinking or are you a winning team member, winning team person, winning team organization? Think about it. If you are not thinking about winning teams, if you are not thinking about yourself as a winning person, then these things doesn't matter. I mean, whatever they say doesn't matter. And if you are a winning team, you will have your own secrets. These are not prescriptions for you. So, understanding the Agile Manifesto itself has been misunderstood and misinterpreted at times. I give this simple example, let me give it to you here as well. I have 1 kg of gold, I have 1 kg of silver. Given an opportunity, you can pick one. Which one would you pick? Gold. Why? It has more value? Wow. Are you saying me silver does not have any value? It has value? It has value? Then why don't you pick it? It has more value. Comparatively, gold has more value. Remember your own words. You are saying silver has, has value, but gold has more value. Now, why don't you apply the same thing on a thought process here? Working software, gold. Comprehensive documentation, silver. It has value, but we value gold more. Working software more. But how is this perceived or heard? What are you working as? I am working as a test engineer. Do you have a test plan? Huh? Don't ask me. Why? We are agile. No documentation. <laughs> or it has been even, I, I personally feel that it is even misinterpreted as minimal documentation. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't say no documentation, minimal documentation. It just says we value this more. As simple as that. And now people working in compliance related products where healthcare or probably per, uh, the uh, banking sector, money related. Yeah, you need a document for your third party approval. Please go ahead, consider that as your product. It's a product for you. It's not a documentation. It is just in a document format. But then you should value the product more, software more. I will tell you why you have to value this more soon. That's another misunderstanding people have. Okay, let's look at this. We have 12 principles. Uh, this is very close to my heart, in fact. 12, uh, yes. 12 principles, because I work for a company called 12 Principles Consulting. Now, 12 principles. If you look at 12 principles, and if you ask me, just give me an executive summary. I don't want to go through all these 12 principles. Just give me an executive summary. I don't know if even the authors of these 12 principles thought about it, but through my research, what I have understood is this. 12 principles helps you build Winning team helps you build winning product. Now keep these two words in your thoughts and read the 12 principles. Helps me build a winning team, helps me build a winning product. And 12 principles will start making so much sense to you. In fact, these winning teams, they had strategies for winning teams. How do I build winning teams? How do I build winning product? And that's exactly what they're talking to you with the title Agile Manifesto and Agile Principles. If we don't use these, we go with the word Agile. There was one person who I, I was talking to, he came to me, he asked me, hey Naveen, you're working for this 12 principles consulting. I was confused, what is this 12 principles, 12 principles? When you spoke about it, that there are four values and 12 principles, I understood Agile related. So your company is related to Agile and that is what is 12 principles, right? I said, yes, thank you so much, you identified it. And then I asked him a simple question. How much experience do you have? What are you doing? And he was so proud about it. Four years in Agile projects. I said, damn, four years in Agile projects and you have zero idea that there are 12 principles? Then what did you do for four years? I don't know how many people claim themselves that we are working in Agile projects and have 
No idea there are four values and 12 principles that are valued with these winning teams. That day, we start winning when you start realizing it. Are we just behind the buzzword agile? Are we really thinking about the context? The silence in this room is speaking loud now. Yeah. Now, these are the two second thought process that really makes you think different. Next, I see a lot of people talk about things which are confusing. They get confused. And as I said, there are infinite strategies. People get confused with strategy. They try to copy from one place to another place. Let me give you one example. I can't give you so many strategic examples, but one. When we talk about products and when we deliver the product to the customer, there are two physical release strategies that you can employ. One physical release strategy is called as fixed time release. You release it on a specific time. That time becomes your constraint and you have to deliver it on that time. Example, 31st of December, my birthday. I want to deliver the product to my customers with a big function. Can you change the date? No. You go upside down in fighting with me, I will not agree for a date change. It's, it's my birthday, special day. Yeah. By the way, 31st is not my birthday, don't send me happy birthday mail. <laughs> That's happened in the past. Okay. Let's look at this. There are second, second one, which is called as a fixed scope release. The fixed scope release, that means you wait for a specific scope to be completed and then release. Many people know fixed scope release as minimum viable product release. MVP releases. These are two different strategies. I'm using the word strategy, which means there are many other ways probably, and you should know which strategy you're using. In fact, how do you work in Scrum? How do you work in a framework? There are a lot of connection as to what strategy you have. If you have, let me give you an example. If you have a fixed time release, in that case, your product owner would say certain aspects of a product backlog. This is high value, high priority, work on this. They are going to drive it. Let's assume that you have a fixed scope release. And I see a lot of people going to the product owner and asking, hey, which one should we work next? Which one should we work next? Product owner, sometimes they get angry. They'll say, I have already given you all the requirements. Why are you asking me over and over again? I don't care. You do the first one, fifth one, and then the second one. Why? Fix scope release. Unless you finish everything, I'm not going to release it to the customer. You see a same scrum, same sprint planning meeting, but two different strategic thought process will have different types of questions with the team members and the product owners. Now the question is, do you know what is your physical release strategy? If you don't know, probably you're asking a, a wrong type of question to a different kind of strategic situation. And that is where people get Oh, I have to repeat this. These people don't understand what we are talking about. So first understand, are we in a physical release of time-based release or a scope-based release? Unfortunately, in most of the organization, especially in services company, what happens is this. We have scope 75 features fixed, time fixed, cost is fixed, high quality product. Ah, superb. Now we want to be agile. Everybody, come in the morning, stand in the circle, answer three questions. We are agile from today. Yeah. And many people don't know, Scrum Master does not come in agile. Yeah. Scrum Master is a role defined in a framework called as Scrum. And if you are talking about Scrum Master and use the word agile, it clearly indicates to me and to the people that you are combining agile and Scrum. And you have no idea what is agile, what is Scrum. Agile is a value and principle, winning team secrets. Scrum is a framework, set of rules and guidelines for developing a software. Don't combine these two. Now, all these things, I want to talk about this uh, Stacy diagram, which is a very interesting one for me to tell you. I'm not going to go to the details, but I'm going to take your attention to one point. In Stacy diagram, it's a very interesting way to put up uh, two axes of uncertainty. Basically, it is two axes of uncertainty, generic, and I've just used it for requirement and, and technology, which is very commonly used for software. So we have one axis of uncertainty, requirements, second axis of uncertainty, technology or domain. Now, 
when both axes are moderately uncertain to a manageable extent, moderately uncertain, we call that zone as a complex zone. In fact, complex zone is like being lost in the forest, A and B. What is going to help us? Inspection adaption, doing it frequently and taking effective and efficient decisions. So, complex zone needs these three key to success. In fact, this is the thought process behind empirical process, empirism, inspection adapting, taking a decision based on what I know now. Now, if you look at scrum, I can just replace the scrum in a very simple example of empirical cycle of inspect and adapt, inspect and adapt, inspect and adapt. Scrum, the sprint is nothing but a cycle of inspect and adapt. Scrum is a framework, rules. It says you are developing a product, I do not care. It is a mobile application, website development, the uh, banking sector, healthcare sector. But then I want you to think about inspect and adaption in every cycle. Scrum does not know where you are using Scrum. It only tells you inspect and adapt no matter what you are doing. You are getting married, inspect and adapt. That is what I did. <laughs> inspect and adapt. Yeah. So, if you look at this, it is a cycle of inspect and adapt. And look at this. We have inspect and adapt. We have frequency of inspect and adapt. Daily Scrum is done daily. Sprint review is done at the end of every sprint. Sprint retrospective at the end of every retro, uh, sprint. Which means I have inspect and adapt. I have the frequency. What is missing? Effective and efficient decision making. That is about you, people. And one of the values was people are gold. Uh, value them. Remember? Yeah. So, if I have to consider these two, now I can simply say that Scrum or a framework like Scrum is best suited in a complex zone. I am not saying it is not suited for others, but it is best suited in complex zone. Now you understood why. Scrum comes with that cycle. Complex zone needs the cycle, best place. But then, it is just a framework. What about your tools? What about your strategies? That makes a big difference now. Remember, framework does not make you win. Strategy makes you win. Yeah, there are infinite of them. Let me just take up that example. Here, in a complex zone, the moment I use the word complex zone, I hope you understand. There are uncertainties in the requirements, uncertainties in the technology. When both axes are uncertain, I mean, I don't understand how a management thinks about scope is fixed, time is fixed, cost is fixed, quality is also fixed. Boy, then what is complex zone? Complex zone is I have uncertainties. I don't know certain things. In a zone which you don't know, how can you fix all zones, all areas of constraints? That is where you need to think about a strategy. What could the potential strategies be? I am just giving you one example. Potential strategies here. You could use one of the strategy which is you fix the time, you fix the cost, you fix the quality, but keep the scope open. In fact, this strategy, this is a strategy by the way. And many people talk about this strategy as agile. How? Inverted triangle. Have you seen this? People talk about inverted triangle, agile. In this, we spoke, we talk about time and cost being fixed, scope is a variable. Boy, we are talking about that variable because it is a complex zone. But let us go to the other aspects. Can I use scope as fixed? Yes, we have that MVP. Then we are in a complex zone. How can MVP arrive? That is because I have understood what is the minimum product required. But that minimum functionalities can go through a lot of iterations and changes. I am okay with it. In that case, I have scope fixed, cost fixed, time is a variable. Yeah. Now you may ask, hey Naveen, how can the time be variable and cost be fixed? Make me a product owner, I will tell you. Yeah. You know how? I will go to the nearby colleges in, the co in this city. I will go to the engineering college and I say, hey guys, I am giving you a three months internship on building a product. Come join my company. Six people will come over. I will say, we are working in Scrum. Take this functionality. Do a sprint planning meeting. Increment the functionality for a short while. And then if you finish it, high quality, produce the product increment. Give me a report. I will give you a certificate. You have been working in my company for four months. And how much did I pay? Zero. And let us assume that the team members did not finish. 
No problem, your internship for four months is over. Now I'll go. Next team, come over. Now whether it takes two years or one year, it does not matter. Why? Because time is not your constraint. Your constraint is 75 features to be completed within the cost. We are working in a complex zone. That is why I make time as a variable now. It still works. I have worked in the such projects. They are still agile in nature. Now, third one. Feature is fixed. Time is fixed. In that case, cost becomes a variable. Now, I am not here to say that use this strategy, use this one. I am here to just question you. Which strategy are you using? Do you know you have a time fix? You have a cost fix? In that case, your scope is a variable. So when the requirement are changing, irrespective of the framework, do you just go to your customer or a sponsor and say, hey, requirements are changing and our variability is in the requirement scope itself. So can we discuss about how much scope can be varied now? That conversation makes you agile because that's a strategic conversation. If you think your time variable is your strategy, talk to the person, hey, we have time as a variable, scope is going through an attrition and feedbacks. Can we talk about how much extension can I have? What is the, instead of giving you a release now, can I give you a release after one month? Because time is a variable. Your conversation now makes it strategic. Think about it. Interesting? Now, the most important part is people are gold, right? You have to value them high. So let me give you one very, very interesting myth that people have seen and that's related to the team building and team stuff. In fact, I want to give you a situation here. I have, you, by the way, do you people know about cricket game and play cricket game? Okay, then you should be able to answer and help me this. If you are playing cricket game and the target is 256 runs, okay, current score is 128 for a loss of two wickets, 20 overs done, it's a 50 over match, current score is six, current run rate is 6.1 runs per over, required run rate 4.23 runs per over. You are a batsman, you are batting and you are on the 21st over. Tell me what is running in your thoughts? What is running in your thoughts? Maintain, Maintain the same strike. Then? Don't lose wicket, don't do any unnecessary things. Just work as it is. Then? What else? Some people may think that we still have 8 wickets, so we may take some chances and accelerate as of now. Yeah, you may want to accelerate now and slow down later. Then? Don't take any risk, just play as normal. Okay. Let's assume that in the same situation, you are in a fielding team. What is running in your thoughts? How quickly, wicket can be taken? How quickly can I take a wicket? Uh, just by praying, give me a wicket, give me a wicket. Will you get it? No. no. You need to change. Yeah, see now the words, strategy has to be changed. Which means you will go think about, oh, do I get a new bowler? Can I get a spinner? Can I get somebody? Can I put a pressure by bringing the fielders in attacking position, yes? Very interesting. You, if you are a batting team, you are thinking differently. If you are in a fielding team, you are thinking differently. Remember your own answers. Let's look at this. The situation, the match continued and the situation is this. Score, target 256 required. Uh, the current is 228 for a loss of 8 wickets. Now 40 overs are done and your run rate required has dropped down to 3. You are in the 41st over, you are batting. What is running in your thoughts now? Take. Don't lose wickets, don't take unnecessary risk now. Play for the full 50 overs. And then, what else? Take a minimum runs, 3 is required, so just relax and take 3. Give the batting to the most settled batsman among the two. Yeah. If you are in a fielding team, what is running in your thoughts? Yeah, how? <laughs> uh, right now, whatever is, how did you take 8 wickets, continue the same thing, maybe bring the best of this bowler during that period. Yes? Yeah. In fact, all these answers that you gave me, they, they are not of my interest as of now. My question is very simple to you. Either in the 20th over or 21st, uh, 40th over, as a batsman or a bowling team, did I ever ask you to win the match? 
Did I ask you to win the match? No. I just asked you what is running in your thoughts. Can you tell me why are you giving me strategies to win the match? You are giving me strategies to win the match. Why? That's the goal. That's the target. Did I say that you have to win the match? No. Then who told you to win? Who told you to win? Just because I put a target you will win? I don't know. It's a basic instinct that you always play to win. No. Yeah, you are saying something. Naturally you want to win. Yeah, interesting. Any other answer there? Huh? It is obvious that we play to win. Yeah, I mean, I am thinking now, why is Naveen saying, my name is Naveen, why is Naveen saying, win? I mean, are we not playing to win? Does he want us to lose? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Huh? Remember your own answers. You are defending something. I did not ask you to win. I did not ask you, tell me how to win. I just asked you what is running in your thoughts and you told me strategies to win. In fact, I want to now introduce to you a very, very interesting thought process. Even though I did not ask you when, you gave me this. I want to introduce you to a very interesting thought process. A team, a team which constantly think about winning, constantly thinks about winning and depending on the situation or irrespective of the situation, they change their strategy to always win. Remember, S with a circle is a strategy for me. So, they change the strategy to always win. Whether you were in the fielding team, batting team, 20th over, 40th over, you change your strategy to always win. Sometimes it was favorable to you, sometimes it was against you, but your strategies were always to win. That mindset, thinking to always win, makes it a self-organizing team. So many people talk about this. We have to work in self-organizing team, self-organizing team. And what is the most common thing? Oh, we have a self-organizing team here. And what does it mean? There is no manager for them. They have to manage everything themselves. Nonsense. In fact, in one of the conference, I met a senior manager. He said, Naveen, we are going agile. We are creating self-organizing team. I said like, oh, creating self-organizing team, this does not make sense to me. Because self-organizing team is a behavior pattern, your thinking capability. I said, I asked him, how are you doing it? His answer was very simple. We have identified all the managers for the team. We have removed them all outside the team. You know, we don't have managers in the teams for Agile. So we have removed them and we have created self-organizing team. I looked at him and I said, hey boy, if you have removed all the managers away from the team, it is not a self-organizing team. It is an orphan team. <laughs> You want to know the difference? In a cricket team, there is a coach. Coach is like a scrum master, but there is a manager for the same team. The role of a manager is different. The role of a coach is different. While the coach looks at how my team, this is my team, how my team works, how do I make them the best, different tools, different strategies, how do I imply that on these people and get the best out of them? The manager looks at the rest of the world, who are the best people to join my company? Who are the best people to stay in my company? How do I make them come here? How do I build the next generation for the best of my company? That's a big difference. Oh. We are building a team without manager. We are self-organizing. Nonsense crap. Yeah. Think about it. And we are working in a complex zone. Oh. OK. The next one. Information radiators, very, very interesting context of information radiators. Information radiators are those things that radiate information. I'm going to short it down, okay? You measure and you display in an information radiator whenever you want to know, I want to inspect and adapt the situation. Whenever you want to inspect and adapt, you measure this, anything. Whenever you want to take effective and efficient decisions, you measure that. And Whenever you see a symptoms, you measure it. Otherwise, you don't measure. Let me give you an example. In this room, if I have to inspect and adapt, oh, I am feeling so hot, I will measure the room temperature. If I am not feeling hot, why would I simply measure the room temperature? Now, let's come to office. We are measuring defect density. Okay. You are measuring defect density? No problem. How long are you going to measure it? I mean, just imagine, 
If I am feeling hot in this room, I will measure the room temperature once, take an effective and efficient action, set the AC, second time I will not measure the room temperature unless there is a symptom. Uh, every week we have to measure defect density, every sprint we have to measure defect density, every sprint we have to measure this number, that number. I am just giving defect density as one example. There are hundreds of measurements done. Do you know why you are doing it? Are you inspecting adapting on that? That's a very interesting thought process that you need to check. Irrespective of what you measure, make sure that they are transparent, harness unbiased and live. If you want to know more about the information radiator, I will ask you, I will, I will just give you a simple situation. Take your car, drive your car for a long distance without a dashboard. You know the importance of a information radiator. A dashboard without, the car without a dashboard is like a team working without information radiator that is making sense. These are some of the information radiators. Yeah, beautiful. I'm sure you would have seen all these things. Don't get me wrong. To me, these are nonsense. You know why? When I look at this, yeah, user story 339. I don't know what this nonsense means. And how can you expect me to inspect and adapt? What is missing in that? I have no idea. So, this is a tool by the way. So, you should know how to inspect and adapt using the tool. The tool should make your job faster, better, easier, simpler. And second one. So, what I did is better part of this. This is like burned on charts. These are also information radiators. But it does not tell me how. So, what I did is I created what is called as definition of done bird. This was one of my research area. I just want to tell you how you should think in terms of building a tool and using it as a strategy. Here, I have all the definition of done for all the items that we are working on. And now, a tick mark means that particular definition of done for that particular story is 100% complete. In fact, I do not have to create tasks. Next, if there is a blank, we know that it is not done. If there is a name of a person, we know that that person is working on that particular aspect. I do not have to know anything extra. One single tool board will tell me everything. Now, we can inspect and adapt. It is not just the tool, it is also what type of tool you are using. Does it make your inspect and adapt easier, faster, better and simpler? Let me give you an example. Let us assume that you are a team member and you are from this team. You see all the tick marks here not applicable and only this box is empty. If you stand in front of this board, where is your focus? On that empty box, superb. Did you now see the tool made you focus on the point which is required? That is inspection adaption. Now you take an effective action. How? Let me work on this. Let someone among us share this particular item and work on this. That is inspection adaption, effective decision making. Make sense? It is not just using a tool. Now, when I coach, yes, management wants this. What? All these standard tools. We need to know what are in progress, what is done, what is this. Yes, good. But then also make sure that you have the stick marks and specific definition of done also associated. Now, when somebody says this is in progress, we know exactly what is done, what is pending. Inspect and app becomes easy. I want to summarize on this. I know I can talk for many hours on this because there are a lot of problems, but I have picked up some four or five key things that should make you think about you and your projects. The takeaway for you is this. You should understand very clearly what is this empirical system and what is the secrets of winning in that empirical system. The secrets of winning in empirical system, inspect up, frequently take effective and efficient decision. You need to understand there is a framework which tells you the rules and guidelines tools and techniques and strategy, infinite strategy, infinite tools and techniques, fixed rules for any framework. You can change the framework, you can change the tools, you can change the strategy. You should know what you are changing, why you are changing. Your common sense should address it. Next, Agile Manifesto. Next time you read Agile Manifesto, think of it as secrets of winning. Somebody else is winning. They have shared their secrets. Am I winning? If I am not winning, why don't I look at their secrets? Think in that direction, read the Agile Manifesto, it will make more sense to you. The next one, self-organizing team. 
It's very simple. Everybody in the team has a single goal and they focus on that single goal. When you play a cricket match, whether you're a batsman, bowler, your goal is to win and nobody needs to tell you. That is when self-organizing behavior comes up. The last one, information radiators. They have to be big, visible, live and meaningful. What do I mean by meaningful? They should be helping you in inspect and adapting. If they are not helping you in inspect and adapting, having a big information radiators don't help you. It's a waste. And the last one, what is the next step? As I said, I can talk more. The next one is agility in people, team, process, organization, leadership. Yes, even organization, leadership, all these things should go through the framework tools and techniques and strategy, should go through inspect and adoption, frequency and effective decision making. There's a lot of things. Thank you so much, dear child. Oops. I'm sorry. From now onwards, I would say, don't use the word agile. From now onwards, if you want to really be successful with agile, be inspecting, adapting frequently and take effective and efficient decisions. Thank you so much.